Welcome to my Splendor Rules Explanation slash playthrough. We are going to be playing against the AI. We do not want to resume the last game. Um, uh, suspicious Natalie Portman. Um, on this screen, so you'll see you can play up to four players if you felt so inclined. I'm only going to play two players. It's going to make it go a little bit faster. Um, we will be playing the standard setup. So three nobles. Five gold tokens, four tokens of each of the other standard colors, and 15 prestige points is our end game trigger. Um, I will be going first just to help with uh, explanation. So the way that the game works is um, that the in game condition that I mentioned, 15 points. Player order is important because once someone hits 15 points, the game will end after both players have had an equal number of turns. So with me as the first player, if I trigger in game, if I score 15 points, if I've gotten to 15 points, Suspicious Natalie Portman would be able to have one more turn because she will always have done, she, she will need one more if I've had one more. But if she gets to 15 before me, she will trigger the in-game right then. I won't get any more turns because if she's having her turn, we've had an equal number of turns throughout the game. Um, you can play this. This is the iOS port. You can play this online with randoms. You can play it pass and play here. Um, but we will be playing it against the AI. So let's take a little pixie poo at our screen here. Um... You see, I'm down at the bottom left. That's my avatar. Suspicious Natalie Portman's up top. And that little blue one, blue outlined one, means that I'm first player. So that's how we know. If I get a turn, Suspicious Natalie Portman will always get a turn right afterwards. So it won't ever end after me. Um, you see that there are three tiers of cards here. Um, the first tier are mines, where we will be... Uh, written around for gems. Uh, the idea behind this game is that we are gem merchants and we are uh, we're trying to make the most efficient, prestigious um, efficient, prestigious, elegant gem operation in all of medieval Europe or Renaissance Europe. So the way that we do that is we're going to be buying these cards from the middle here. The bottom tier is mines, the second tier are transportation options, and the third tier are going to be shops. Um, now the number on the, the second tier with uh, like the twos and the one, those are how many points that card is worth if you buy it. So you'll notice the mines at the bottom, they don't have any points. Some of the cards in that deck will have a value. Um, but not all of them. The ones up top, the shops in that top row, they all have values um, that are quite high. Um, so, how do you get these cards? That's a great question. So, that column of tokens next to the three rows of cards, that's how we will invest in the mines, the transportation, and the shops. So, on your turn, you'll be able to do one of three things. Uh, the first thing is collect gems. So basically just scavenge them out. Um, the rules of collection are you can choose three tokens of unique colors. So you could get a black, a red, a green, a black, a red, a blue, a black, a red, a white. As long as they're not, two of them aren't the same color, you can get three different colored tokens. And that's not including the gold tokens. We'll talk about them in a minute. Or you can get two tokens of the same color as long as there are four of those tokens in the stack. So I could get two black tokens, that would be my turn, and Suspicious Natalie Portman would not be able to take the remaining two black tokens because there would only be two in the stack. She would have to take one black token and then one each of two other ones. So that's the first option you can do, take tokens. The second option is purchase a card from the table. So. 
you'll see that the cards all have prices in circles. Um, like the uh, emerald to the far right in the bottom row takes two sapphires and two rubies. You can use tokens that you've accrued. Um, if you do that, you expend them. You put them back into the pool and you collect the card and it's part of your gem empire now. And that card that we're talking about, that emerald card in the bottom right, once you've purchased it, it will count as a permanent green. So then to buy this chocolate gem over here on the left, you would just need to spend three red tokens and a black token because you have this permanent green card in your possession. So that's the second thing you can do. You can exchange tokens and card value for cards on display. The third and final option that you can take is to take a card on reserve. And what that means is you're getting a card from the table that you can't afford right now. Maybe you don't have enough, if I don't have enough sapphires to take that emerald, I can take the card and put it next to me so that I'm the only one who can complete that card. And I also get one of the wild tokens at that point, one of the gold ones. The gold can count as any gem type. Um, you can have up to three cards in reserve at any given point during the game. It's, I mean, it's not a bad idea sometimes if there's a card that you really want that you're afraid that the other person's going to get. It can get a little bit cutthroat sometimes. Okay, so the final part of our display here are those three nobles on the right. You'll see that they all have a point value on them in the bottom right hand corner. They're each worth three points. And their requirements are a little bit different from the mine, transportation, and shop card requirements in that you need to have the printed number of color of cards in order to satisfy that noble. So that top noble, you need to have accrued during the game three green cards, excuse me, three green cards, three red cards, and three black cards. For that middle noble, you need to have accrued four white cards and four black cards. And for the bottom one, three white, three blue, three green. You cannot use tokens to make those nobles happy. They are unimpressed by your temporary possession of gems. They want to know that you have the infrastructure to continue to make them happy in their quest for gems, in their gem lust. Um, so we're going to go first. Now, as you can see, we don't have anything in our inventory at the bottom. So we're going to start scavenging some gems. Um, we're probably going to start with... I want that white card, I think. So I'm going to want eventually two blue and two black. But I can only take two of one of them right now. There's not really any benefit to doing that either. So I'm just going to take a blue, a black... And that'll give me a white. Let's take a red for the future. Now, I'm going to click in turn, and you'll see at the bottom they show as the tokens, and there's that 3 out of 10. What that means is I have 3 out of the 10 maximum tokens that I can have. Your cards, there's no limit to the number of cards you can have, but you do have a max of tokens, which again is 10. And the wild tokens do count towards that. So you got to be careful. You can't just... Just take a bunch of these. Um, excuse me. Okay. So, we're going to take a blue and a black. And another red. And now, oh, do, 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 and then they took theirs. Suspicious so Natalie Portland took hers. So, you see those two cards at the bottom, um, the rightmost, and then the one to the left or the rightmost. They both are outlined in green, which means given my current token status, I could afford either one of them. Um, I'm leaning towards the white one. Yes. So I tap on it. And now it's part of mine. Now, if you look at my, uh, my collection at the bottom, you see I now have a white rectangle. If I buy something that costs one white, I won't have to get rid of that card. It's just a permanent access to diamonds, um, which is pretty useful. Now, what I want, why did I do that? 
I should have taken the green. Golly, Rachel. Okay, so, whoa, they took red. Hmm. Black, green. Okay, let's see how reserve works. Um, we're going, well, hold on. No, we're just going to take black, blue, and green. We'll see what we end up with. Good. She put some reds back out there. So we're going to take one of those reds, one of those whites, and one of those black. Well, the only black. All right. Now that puts us at eight, which is okay because we're going to buy a card when it's our turn again. You can see the turns move pretty quickly. There's not that much that you can do on your turn. Uh, so we're going to... Hmm... Once I get that one, uh, all right, I'm going to take this one because I'll be able to get it next time. I'm really hesitant to spend all three of my red tokens on just that one chocolate. See what I can use this. So I use one gold, one white token, and my white card. And now I can get this one. And it'll only cost me two tokens because I have a red card. Um, I need one more black token to be able to get that other red card. What I usually try to do is have at least one card of each color. Um, so ideally I would like another. I need a green or a blue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this black one. I all need black. The white one. I'm going to end up with a blue one. Nah, 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 nah. Alright, and we'll just take a green one because we don't have any green. So hopefully she doesn't, if we tap on her, it'll show us what she has in her inventory. So she wouldn't be able to afford that blue one anyway. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take it. Hmm. Okay. I need. I still need a black card. There's none that I can currently afford, so I'm gonna go token collecting. I'm gonna take hmm, take a black, a green, and a white. So that'll let me get that white one. If I feel so inclined, which I think I might. Do I want that blue one or that white one? I want the white one. So the reason I chose the white one over the blue one is in terms of the nobles on the side, um, two of them require white and only one of them requires blue. So I'm kind of hedging my bets a little bit. I still need that green. I need a green one. So I'm going to take this one on reserve. So I'm looking for, <coughs> so now she's got two points and you can see that up at the top near her name or near her picture up here, um, she scored two points and I have scored zero, which is pretty usual for me at this point. All right, so we're going to take a black, we're going to take a green and we're going to take a white. And then we'll be able to pay for this green one next turn. Ooh, or I could just get that one now. I'm going to do that. And then I won't have to use my wild token. Because um, I'll have black. Okay. So we're going to pay for this one, which is going to give us a point. So now we have a point. And we're going to start to think about what we want to do next. Uh, 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 I want this white one. I do need a blue one. So we'll get this red one, which will help us get the blue one. Because that blue is four red. Hmm. 
can afford that white one right now. We'll go ahead and take that one because it's worth points. I can afford it now. I can't anymore. Alright, so. I'll get that green one. I'm going to get that red one. I'm going to get that green one because it's points. And then I'm going to try to get that red one at the bottom right, which I will be able to get. Ooh, or that blue one. Mm, let's get the blue one. Then I'm going to get that red one. She could get that red one. She doesn't want the red one. I do. Okay, so let's get this green one. Take that green one. Okay, so in terms of nobles, for the top one, I have three of the green, I have three of the red, but I only have two of the blue. For the second one, I have all four of the white, but I only have two, or two of the black, rather. And then the last one, I have three, at least three of the white, I need one more blue, and I have all the green. So what I want are more blacks and more greens. Nope, more blues. More blacks and more blues. I'm going to take this red one, which is going to let me get that blue one. Ugh, three points. Boo. All right, I'm going to take this one, which is going to give me that bottom noble. So that'll give me three more points. You can see there's a bit of a, a bit of a snowball effect here at the end of the game. Ha, ah, stop getting points. Natalie Portman. Natalie Pointman. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Uh, black. Black, 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 black. So those two up there are pretty heavy on the red. Um, I think I could do it, though. Let's take... We're going to take a red, we're going to take a black, I don't need a green, uh, I have enough green, so we'll just take a random one. And then we'll take this one, which will permanently bump us up. And then we should be able to get the big one up there which is going to get us four points and this noble which gets us three more points so that means natalie pointman has this is her last opportunity to get five points she only got four points from that card so we got a splendor victory da -da -da. all right so let's look at the details um this was me you can see I had 16 points total. I had 15 cards from the bottom row, two cards from the middle, and one card from the top. Not probably the most efficient way to go about things, but I still won, so I don't care. Um, I had 10 of my points from cards and six from the nobles. Uh, if we look at Natalie Pointman up here, she had all of her points from cards. She only had 11 cards from the first row and 5 from the second. So she was getting some more points by getting to the second row than I was. Um, so that's Splendor. I highly recommend the app. Um, there is a... Because not only can you, can you play against AI, you can play pass and play, you can play online. But it has this challenges, which is like a campaign mode. And it's got all these locations on them, so you click on one, right? And it has these um, these six campaign options. I don't think I've played Istanbul before. Let's play one that... Yeah, okay. So, and then you'll put a little check once you accomplish it. I haven't done all these, kind of amazingly. Um, so when you click on one of the scenarios... It'll, it gives you sort of artificial constraints for the game. So with these, you need to complete the challenge in less than 33 turns. You can take three tokens each turn without any constraints. 
The level one cards are not used. You start with five tokens per color. Once spent, the tokens are not returned to their piles. You start with two bonuses of all colors except onyx. Oh, it's not chocolate, it's onyx. And diamond. Or you start with only one bonus. And noble tiles are not used in this challenge. So, you want to get to... Um, you need to collect a certain number of bonuses to win the game. Um, so we'll just take a quick peeksie poo here. You're playing against yourself. You're playing against a clock, basically. So you want to get up to five cards, five white cards, six blue cards, six green cards, six red cards, and five black cards. Um, and once you use, as it said in the rules, once you use the tokens, you can't use them again. Anyway, we won't go through these. I don't want to ruin how much fun it is for you to play it on your own. So I do highly recommend the app just for that challenges aspect. As far as the game goes, it's a nice enough, um, like, lightish game, I think. Uh, I much prefer the app to actually playing it on tabletop, but it is a very popular tabletop game. So if you're thinking about going to a game night, um, chances are there will be a copy of Splendor or um, Century Road um, or S Century Spice Road or Spice Century Road. Uh, which is similar to Splendor, um, and you'll know how to play now. So go, go to your gaming meetups, meet new people, play games, and um, I hope this is helpful.